I'm traveler and Black History fan Stephen Vincent. Join me on my social media feeds throughout May as I celebrate Lost in Space, stories about little-known Afronauts, which is my look into the overlooked contributions of people from the African diaspora who have made incredible contributions to space exploration. Travel the world, celebrate your history. This is Safiri. The Dogon people of Mali and Africa are known for their vast knowledge of astronomy and detailed observations of the stars, which date back to the year 3200 BC. The Dogon knew of Saturn's rings, Jupiter's moons, the structure of the Milky Way, and the orbit of the Sirius star system for thousands of years. To this day, the astronomical knowledge of the Dogon people is so advanced, it is still unknown how it was acquired. However, their knowledge helped in the foundation of today's space exploration. Before astronauts took flight, it is important to understand the foundations for modern space exploration. The people of the Napta Playa region, located in far southwest Egypt, are now widely believed to be some of the earliest known astronomers. In researching the NASA astrophysics data system, I discovered that a structure built by the Napta Playa people contained a complex map of the Milky Way that dates back to the year 17,500 BC. Other structures in Napta Playa date back to 4600 BC and are aligned with stars such as Vega, the Orion Belt, Sirius, and Centaur. Another African location that demonstrated knowledge of the stars is shrouded in mystery. Namora Tonga, located in Kenya, is widely believed to be the first astronomy site in sub-Saharan Africa dating back to the year 300 BC. The site contains two stone circles that align with 25 star groups, including the Sirius and Orion systems. What is astonishing is the fact that today, every stone except for three of them, which are off by only one degree due to changes in the Earth's rotation, still accurately point to these stars. The final ancient African culture I am focusing on that developed the foundation for astronomy and space programs are the Kemites in Egypt. 3,000 years ago, they were the first to record a precise constellation map, which today still provides useful information for astronomers. Another interesting fact about the Kemites is that they were another ancient culture that also focused their astrology on the movement of Sirius, which led them to develop the calendar we use today. Moving ahead several centuries to post-colonial America, I am focusing on an astronomer and subject from an earlier Safiri episode, Benjamin Banneker. During his childhood, Banneker was able to gain knowledge of astronomy from his father, who was abducted into slavery from a royal family in what is now modern-day Guinea in Africa. Banneker also went on to teach himself complex astronomical calculations, which in 1791 led him to become a well-known Almanac series author who documented precise positions of the stars. 150 years after Benjamin Banneker published his first almanac, black engineers were hired at NASA and astrophysicist George Carruthers was part of this trailblazing group. Carruthers invented an ultraviolet telescope that provided evidence of molecular hydrogen in interstellar space. His telescope was also used during the first moon-based observatory during the Apollo 16 mission, which enabled scientists to examine the Earth's atmosphere for pollutants and to see more than 550 stars, nebula, and galaxies. Edward Mukuka Nkoloso is the original Afronaut. Based near Lusaka, Zambia, he created the term Afronaut and had a big dream back in 1964 to take Zambia all the way to Mars. His goal was to beat the United States and Russia in the space race. However, a lack of credibility and deep financial resources kept in Colossal's Afronaut a dream at the time. Today, he is regarded as a hero figure and his vision helped to inspire the transformation of the Afronaut into reality. After focusing on the foundations leading up to the Afronauts, it is now time to discover them and others behind the scenes who have earned their place in history. 
On September 18, 1980, history was made as Arnaldo Tamayo Mendez became the world's first black person in space. Originally from Guantanamo, Cuba, Tamayo joined the Russian Intercosmos Space Program in 1978 and trained two years for the historic mission aboard Soyuz 38. After docking in space with Salyut 6, Tamayo conducted experiments on space adaptation syndrome and microgravity. After 124 Earth orbits and seven days in space, Tamayo safely returned to Earth. I'm traveler and Black History fan, Stephen Vincent. In 1961, former President John F. Kennedy selected Air Force test pilot Captain Ed Dwight to become the first African-American astronaut trainee. Dwight went on to phase two in his training at the Aerospace Research Pilot School, but due to the racial climate at NASA, he was not selected to be an astronaut. It would not be until 1967 before the United States saw its first African-American astronaut and an additional 15 years before its first black astronaut entered outer space. During June 1967, history was made in the United States as Robert Lawrence became the first African-American astronaut. After completing test pilot school at Edwards Air Force Base, California, Lawrence was selected to become an astronaut in the planned manned orbiting laboratory. On December 8, 1967, Lawrence's brief career as an astronaut was tragically cut short as he was killed in a plane crash at Edwards Air Force Base. On August 30th, 1983, Guyon Bluford made history by becoming the first African American in space. During Bluford's historic first mission aboard the space shuttle, he and the crew tested a robotic arm, launched a satellite, and conducted experiments during 98 orbits around the Earth in a 145 hour period. Between 1983 and 1992, Bluford flew on four space shuttle missions, logged over 688 hours in space, and was also the second person of African descent in space. May Jemison made history in September 1992 by becoming the first black woman to travel into space. Jemison's NASA career started in 1987 after she was selected out of 2,000 applicants to be one of the 15 candidates in NASA Astronaut Group 12. During her historic 1992 journey, Jemison served as a mission specialist on the Space Shuttle Endeavor where she spent eight days in space. During her mission, she orbited the Earth 127 times and conducted several science experiments. On February 9th, 1995, Bernard Anthony Harris Jr. made history by becoming the first African American to complete a spacewalk. Harris made the historic trek during his second mission aboard the space shuttle. He started his NASA career back in 1987 and his first assignment was aboard Space Lab D2 in 1991. Another astonishing fact about Harris's career as an astronaut, he spent over 438 hours and traveled 7.2 million miles in space. After his historic tenure, Harris left NASA in 1996. Our next Afronaut is Charles Bolden Jr. who started his NASA career in May 1980. Bolden spent over 680 hours in space and piloted space shuttles Columbia and Discovery. He also served as mission commander aboard space shuttles Columbia and Atlantis. The capstone of Bolden's stellar career was his 2009 appointment by President Barack Obama as the first African American NASA administrator. Bolden served in his leadership role at NASA until his retirement in 2017. As we continue our discovery of the Afronauts, let's focus on some lesser known names. Frederick Gregory became an astronaut in 1978, and he is a veteran of three space shuttle missions and spent over 455 hours in space. Gregory retired in 2005 as NASA's deputy director. Winston Scott became an astronaut in 1992 and has flown on two space shuttle missions and completed three spacewalks. Robert Kirby became an astronaut in 1994 and has completed three space shuttle missions, three spacewalks, and spent over 593 hours in space. 
Victor Glover started his astronaut career in 2013 and is set to make history as he might be aboard a future SpaceX Dragon mission in August 2020 as they launch into space headed towards the International Space Station. Stephanie Wilson started her NASA career in 1996, flew three space shuttle missions, and has spent the most time in space than any other astronaut with well over 1,000 mission hours logged. Joan Higginbotham became a NASA astronaut in 1996, flew on one space shuttle mission, and spent 308 hours in space. Yvonne Cagle started her astronaut career in 1996, but did not fly a space mission. Jeanette Epps was selected to become a NASA astronaut in 2009, and up until 2018, she was set to become the first person of African descent to live on the International Space Station. Our newest female astronaut is Jessica Watkins. She previously worked as a planner for the Mars 2020 rover, started NASA astronaut training in 2017, and has not yet flown a space mission. Leland Melvin started his astronaut career in 1998, flew on two space shuttle missions, and served as NASA's Office of Education Associate Administrator from 2010 until 2014. In July 2000, Benjamin Drew started NASA astronaut training and has flown on two space shuttle missions. Bobby Satcher became a NASA astronaut in 2004 and flew his first space shuttle mission in 2009. We have reached the end of my month-long astronaut celebration. When we look at the future, the role of the astronaut is potentially bright as the place where it all started with the early foundations in space exploration rooted in ancient astronomy is now poised to go farther and deeper into space. Africa is now experiencing a new landscape in regards to space as several countries have created space agencies that are looking towards the stars and today have the means of sending our astronauts to heights our ancient astronomers researched, documented, and dreamed of traveling centuries ago. Going forward, astronauts will have a defining role in space. When looking towards our future in space, we also must look back and never forget those who we tragically lost as we finally reach space. I'm Traveler and Black History fan Stephen Vincent. Join me next time on Safari.